The Redmi A2 Plus is the latest in a long line of ultra-cheap entry-level phones from Xiaomi. It's perfect for kids, students or anyone on a budget. It might not be the prettiest phone, but it gets the job done. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you want to know about the Redmi A2 Plus, including its design, display, camera capabilities, gaming performance, battery life, and whether or not it's worth its price. Spoiler alert, it's definitely worth it, especially considering it's one of the cheapest phones on the planet. But before we get started, let's take a look at what's in the box. Inside the plain white box you'll find the following essentials. The phone itself, wrapped and protected, a standard 10 watt charger and a micro USB cable. I'm not surprised Redmi cheaped out on the charger again, but we'll talk about that later. A bunch of leaflets including a warranty card, quick start guide and a safety certificate. And that's all we need to get started, so let's check out the phone's design. The Redmi A2 Plus has a plastic body that feels durable and looks great for a budget phone. The texture back panel feels good and the flat edge makes it easy to hold. It comes in three colours, aqua blue, classic black and sea green. On the right side of the phone we have the volume and power buttons. On the left it houses a slot with a dedicated micro SD and a dual SIM slot, which is pretty sweet. This means you can use two different SIM cards in the same phone, which is great for traveling. For example, you could use one SIM card for your home network and the other for the network in the country you're visiting. This way you can avoid paying international roaming fees. There's also a dedicated space for a micro SD card. The maximum capacity of the card which can be used in A2 Plus is 512GB. This could be useful to store some photos, videos and music. At the bottom of the phone we got a micro USB port, a microphone and a 3.5mm headphone jack. The speaker grille is on the top, but the sound outputs from the earpiece as well. On the front there's a water drop notch in the middle which houses a selfie camera. The screen bezels are thick, but that's to be expected from the budget phone. The rear panel has a dual camera setup and a fingerprint sensor. The sensor is fast and consistent, but the phone lacks facial recognition. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the design. It's a great budget phone with a durable build and a good selection of features. The A2 Plus has a large 6.52 inch HD display with a resolution of 1600 by 720 pixels and 60 Hz refresh rate. That's enough pixels for watching videos or playing games, but don't expect to be blown away. The display is bright enough for most indoor use, but it can be a bit washed out in direct sunlight. The colors are decent, but they're not the best I've seen on a budget phone. The phone has a single speaker that's located at the top of the phone. This is a bit unusual since most budget phones have speakers at the bottom. But hey, Xiaomi got to do the Xiaomi things. The speaker is okay, but it's not the strongest point of the phone. The sound is a bit tinny and lacks bass, but it's not the worst I've heard. When you're holding the phone, the sound is directed straight into your hand, which is a bit annoying. A2 Plus has a dual camera setup on the back with an 8 megapixels main sensor and 2 megapixels depth sensor. I'm hyped to put this camera through its paces and see how it performs. And before we carry on, make sure you're subscribed. So the 8 megapixels rear camera takes pretty decent photos in good lighting conditions with good detail and color, but it can be a bit grainy in low light. The A2 Plus camera compares pretty well to other budget phones like the Hatwaf and Blackview, but it's no match for the iPhone 11. The digital zoom is pretty bad, so don't expect to get any good photos if you zoom in. The video quality is ok, but there's no image stabilization, so the footage can be a bit shaky. The 5 megapixel selfie camera is also decent, taking good photos in good lighting conditions, but the selfies can be a bit soft in the low lights. The A2 Plus runs on Android 13 Go Edition, which is basically a lightweight version of Android for budget phones. It's fast and responsive enough for most stuff, but don't expect to be playing any graphics intensive games on it. 
It's powered by the entry-level MediaTek Helio G36 chip and has 2GB of RAM, which is not great. But you can virtually expand the RAM by 2GB by taking it from the storage, which is fine, I guess. But the base storage is only 32GB, so you'll definitely want to get a micro SD card if you plan on storing any music, videos or some apps. The phone has all the basics covered, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS and a micro USB port. As mentioned earlier, it even has a headphone jack, which is great for people who still prefer to use wired headphones. By the way, it doesn't have NFC, so you can't use it for contactless payments. I tested out the A2 Plus on a few different games and it did pretty well with some of them. So I was surprised to find that I could install Call of Duty Mobile on the A2 Plus. I mean, it's not the most powerful phone out there, but I figured it wouldn't be able to run a game like Call of Duty. But I was wrong. The game was playable, but I had to set the graphics to the lowest possible setting. There were still a lot of lags and frame drops, especially in the busy moments, but I was still able to play the game. I mean, it wasn't ideal, but it was playable. And hey, at least I could say that I played Call of Duty Mobile on Redmi 8 Super Plus. So if you're a fan of the game and you're willing to put up with some lag, you can still play it on this phone. So I tried to install Asphalt 9 Legends on my Redmi 8 Plus, but it wouldn't install. I guess the phone just doesn't have the power to run it, so I had to settle for Asphalt 8 instead. Asphalt 8 ran ok on Redmi 8 Plus, but I had to set the graphic on low again. Even then, there were still some lags and frame drops, but I was still able to win the race, so I guess it's playable. I also tried another shooter game, Shadowgun Legends. And just like Call of Duty Mobile, the game was playable, but there were a lot of frame drops. It was so bad that it was almost unplayable. I mean, I could technically play the game, but it was so choppy and laggy that it wasn't enjoyable. So I gave up after a few minutes. Fortunately, the 2D games like Candy Crush and Subway Surfers ran perfectly fine on Redmi 8 2 Plus. I was able to play them without any lack of frame drops, so if you're onto simple games, you won't be disappointed with this phone. But if you're a serious gamer, you're going to want to get a phone with a more powerful processor. The Redmi 8 2 Plus is just not up to the task. The phone has a massive 5000 mAh battery that will easily last you 5 days on a single charge. That's right, 5 days! Well, there's a catch. Xiaomi made the same little oopsie with the Redmi A2 Plus as they did with the predecessor, the Redmi A1. They both have micro USB ports. This means you can't use one cable for everything and you can't even use a faster charger than 10 watts because it might fry your phone or charger as micro USB doesn't support the PD standard like a normal USB chargers. So effectively charging this phone takes almost 3 hours which can be a bit of a pain. Talking of charging, I have checked the temperature when it's charging using the thermal camera and after around 5 minutes of charging the phone warms up slightly up to around 32 degrees celsius while the charger heats up quicker and gets the temperature around 38 degrees celsius. After around 3 hours of charging the phone is at 98% and the temperature reach 38 degrees celsius which is not too bad. The charger, on the other hand, heats up to as high as 58 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot considering it's not a fast charger. I really hope the next year's iteration of the phone, the A3, will finally use a USB-C and a PD standard for charging with an option for faster charging. Come on Xiaomi, it's 2023, the 20 years old micro USB standard is an outdated solution. But even with these limitations, the 5 days of battery life is still great. Even if you're a heavy user, you're still able to get at least 4 days out of a single charge. So we're good here. So the Redmi A2 Plus is an ok budget friendly smartphone. It's great for basic tasks like making phone calls, sending text messages, browsing the internet and taking quick photos. But if you're looking for a phone with more power or features, you might want to consider a different option. The phone has a lot to offer for the price, but it's not without its flaws. It has a massive battery that will last you for days and a large display that's great for watching videos, but it struggles with more demanding tasks like gaming and it has only one speaker so the sound isn't the best.
For the price, it's a well-designed and good-looking basic phone, but if you're looking for the phone with all the bells and whistles, you'll need to spend more money. I hope that the next year's iteration of the A series will address some of these limitations, but for now, the A2 Plus is a great option for people who are looking for a budget-friendly smartphone with a long battery life and a large display. The phone is available on Amazon and AliExpress and you can find the links in the video description and you can also scan the QR code that's on the screen right now. Just a heads up, we're not affiliated with Xiaomi or Redmi in any way, we had to buy this phone ourselves for the review and all of our opinions are our own, so you could be sure it's a real thing. If you have any questions, requests or just want to say hi, leave us a comment below. We love hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one.